seconds. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. One. Go. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline. Coast to coast. Hey, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And Adam just walked in the door. Very nice. How dare you? I mean, five minutes ago. I've been in my ten minutes. I've been in my seat for uh, thirteen seconds now. Not been in your seat yet. Uh, Yes, I've been in Drew's seat. (laughs) So I'm going to see if I can fart it up before I leave. No, actually, I asked Adam to let me announce. Since tonight we're being visited by Children of the Night, which is an organization designed to help adolescents, eleven to seventeen year olds, eleven to seventeen year olds, and we are one. And you are a therapist or a Actually, I'm the program director. Big Valley is the program director, and we have one of the, uh, what we call Anna graduate or participants, or how to... Participants. Participants at uh, Children of the Night. Anna, Adam, you are right? Yeah, do, I'm trying to figure out how to get your seat to rock backward. I'm, I'm, you know, I like <laughs> to recline during the <laughs> I know. show. Just put your feet up on the bed. Where is that thing? Don't you do that? Yeah, yeah. Who locked it, it pull, out? Pull, it just does that. There you go. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, now I can nap, finally. Go ahead with the inner future. So, I'm going to get and, comfortable uh, and, over here. Is, for purposes of the rest of the country, the, there's a huge concert that Carog is putting on this weekend called the Acoustic Christmas, and uh, many of the proceeds from that concert are going to Children of the Night. It's also going to the uh, Trip Reeb Get Another Turbo <laughs> Porsche Fund. I don't know if you're aware of that. And whatever fallout of the night. Whatever's <laughs> left over <laughs> from that is going directly, if that's there right. is any. That's right. And, uh... <laughs> Tripp told me personally that uh, if he comes up short this year, he's going to actually dip into the Children of the Night Fund <laughs> to help pay it off. I, I, so I'm you, sort of more struck by the fact that Tripp called you. That kind of scares me. Well, we ran into each I other see. in the hall. We're at auto auction. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, where are you guys? Is your, are, are you over on Gower? No, actually, Children of the Night is in the Van Nuys. We ran a walking center in Hollywood for many years, but we've moved uh, to the Valley. Oh, We've been out there since 1992. You're really moving up. Uh, where are you in Van Nuys? We're in Van Nuys, right near the police station. Oh. But you're actually you're actually a, a residential center, though. We have there. well, we have a hotline that's nationwide. We have an outreach program that goes out on the streets in different parts of the city and also different states. How do you define what it is your program does? The program is a Children of the Night is a privately funded nonprofit uh, that works specifically with kids involved in prostitution. Not not just drugs and alcohol, but specifically specifically kids involved. And in And then prostitution. obviously that usually encompasses all sorts of other things. Drugs, Most alcohol. of them are kids that have been abused yeah. and have wound up on the streets. Yeah. yeah. What What is <clears throat> the um, percentage of males to females? Our program tends to to work more with females than males. We work with about eighty percent female. Right. Our boys tend to be gay or cross dressers. Right. Yeah. There's no uh, God knows if 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 there was uh, male prostitution that catered to young women, it wouldn't be a problem. Well, you know what I mean? I mean, there wouldn't there wouldn't be a flopping in a place. You mean basically all males would participate? I'd do it. Yeah, I would have yeah. done it. I, I, you know what I mean? I, people don't understand this. I think uh, they watched American Gigolo too many times or something. <laughs> Female prostitutes uh, service males, and male prostitutes service males. There you go. Yeah, that's that's the downside of the prostitution game for the guys. Uh, and. And most of these people, are are they from somewhere around the country and not from here? Our kids are from all over. We have kids from Vancouver. We have kids from Vegas. We have kids from all over the country. What would is, would is, you say, though, an organization like this gets more business in L.A. where people come, uh, sort of disenfranchised, people we, wanting, chasing dreams, running away? Have, yeah, we still have our kids that come to Hollywood thinking that, it's, that they can be movie stars or that they can be models or whatever. But for the most part, we, we fly kids in from all over. Oh, you fly them in? Yeah, the pimps take them from city to city to city, so they know to call us wherever they happen to be. Well, really? They they, they, uh, they travel around like a, some sort of uh, sex circus, huh? Well, the minute the streets get hot with the police, and the police start to realize that they're kids and not adults, and they start to, their aliases catch up with them, they just move on to a different city. Is there is there a market for kids, per se? Or do the Johns, as we like to call it in the business, do they not know that these kids are underage? I think they kid themselves. They don't want to know that they're 14, 13 years old. Right. Um, and the girls lie about their age also so that they don't get picked up as juveniles. Right. So uh, so they actually, what, do they put them in a van or something and just drive uh, across country? I mean, they just who move, are these pimps? They move. Victim or vis- victimizer piece. So they, can, they can see it. I don't know what they see. Absolutely, they can see it. It's they unbelievable. Just, they talk to these kids for five minutes and they become their friends. They realize that this is a kid that's, that's going to fall prey to and, their... 
And how do you get hold of these kids? Our outreach team goes out on the streets. They go out on the streets in Hollywood. They go out on the streets in, in Arizona and Las Vegas and Just different a areas. Van and a butterfly net. And Actually, that's... they pass out cards. We're not in a van. We're very low key. We pass out cards and condoms and keep moving because they're making money out there at the time. And when they when they want to call us, they know who to call. And when so if they were to call you. Could they go somewhere that night? Absolutely. If uh, if they call us, we have cab accounts in different cities. We can rescue them from pimps. What is the number? 1-800-551-1300. And uh, so they could call that number. They could say, I'm in some <coughs> motel right now. I want to get out of here. You could have a cab there in a matter of... Either the cab or we work real closely with law enforcement if it looks like a cab's not going to be safe for them. And uh, they'll get them. They'll take them to where you guys take are. Take them to someplace safe until we can figure out what whether you, we can bring them in. You guys immediately will put them to work in a sweatshop in the basement, making us <laughs> absolutely knock not. off Gucci bags that are being shipped to Indonesia. <laughs> no. Well, well they got they got to earn their keep. You don't haven't they? asked anything of Anna yet, who is one of the. Oh, you one of the one of the kids? Yes. All right. Now, how old are you now? I'm 17. Oh, you're still one of the kids. Yes, I'm still <laughs> one, said, of the kids. one of the kids. She lived no, in I, I thought I thought that she was one Graduate. of the people that yes, got involved. You know, it always happens, or it seems to happen a lot. Or you can tell me that people get involved with the program and then they stay with it after they've they work recovered there. and now they're staying on. Right, we have an alumni program. We stick with kids for years. If they want to keep in contact with us, if they want to go to college, whatever, we can still help them. All right, so uh, Annie, is it, by the way? Anna. Oh, Anna. And uh, when did you first come in contact with I Children I came in the contact night? with them on August 15th. Of this year? 19th. This, this year. year. This oh, year. really? So mm -hmm. it was a pretty quick uh, turnaround. And yes. is your was your story a, a typical one? Um, not, I mean, not everybody's story is typical. There's no really typical story. Everybody but has a different story. Broken family usually. Abuse not dad. always. Not always. Some some come from a very privileged family and all right. you know it's all in who they two meet. Two kids in twenty years have come from that, but not. It's all in who they meet. It really is. Yeah, but but hold on. I, I don't want to tell your business, but here it goes because <laughs> they do this with everybody. That's why everyone hates me. But y you have to pr 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 uh, predominantly your kids are made up of kids of, of families that are broken, well, of fathers that are abusive. The tr trauma right? survivors. Trauma yeah, survivors. people who are emotionally, physically, sexually abused, sexually abused and who got out of that house drunken stepdad kind of thing. I mean, once in a while there's somebody whose parents are together and they're upper, upper middle class or something and they still hook up with the wrong people. But by and large, that's not your clientele, right? You know, we see it all. We really do. And, and How it's, come it's, no one will ever admit to w one thing? What is that, Drew? <laughs> How come? Hold on. He said, don't listen to this for a second. <laughs> I, it, it, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not attacking, but what I'm saying is, is I know 85% of the people that walk through that door come from broken and abusive they're situations. They're usually kids that have been sexually abused. and so Right, so just say most all of them. <laughs> say it. Say most, most all the people all kids come from this. Abused. Because I, it drives Queen. me nuts. It's like, no, anyone can get AIDS. Anyone can get AIDS. Well, yes, but if you're gay and if you're an, you know, HIV, if you're an IV drug user, no, anyone can get it. Anyone can get it. I don't like that message. I mean, if your family's together and your parents love you, you shouldn't be running away. And you're well, probably not going to do it. But we've seen pimps that it's, meet kids it's on happened. bus stops it and happened. call them every night. It's happened, but I don't, I'm not worried about that. Okay. I'm worried about the 90% who have the abuse of drunken stepdad who gets shoved out but of I'll the tell house. You, it's just as traumatizing for a kid who comes from a good home. No, not as bad. The family <laughs> turns around, them. calls well, a nice them a whore, car. and the, and the oh, wow. child can never return back to that home. Yeah, so. but that's true. Do you remember when your mom family called, definition, though. You remember when your mom called you a whore for the first time, don't you? It's just too young to remember those early memories. But it doesn't sting as bad now around the holidays yeah, when like, she calls uh, you a whore. They just get used to it. You yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear it anymore. Yeah. It's not you don't a big hear it. deal. It's like you become numb or something. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time my mom called me a slut. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> so we'll be giving that number out. We'll be talking to uh, these uh, these kids, and and I think it's a great thing that you guys are doing, uh, by the way. And and I think it's great when you can uh, connect with like I, I like the idea of the cab company, where they'll uh, arrange uh, transportation. I'm guessing you got some of the deals, same kind of deals working with airlines and you know, bus we companies. Do. We don't, we don't, um, bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. figures the airlines. But the cab companies, most of them we pay, but uh, at the same time, it's safe that Pimp doesn't know where the kid's going. She's right. getting in the cab and just doesn't come back. 
So where does most of the money that you'll get from something like this uh, benefit concert that's going on this weekend, where, where would that go? It all goes to providing services for the kids. We're 100% nonprofit, so and we're very much a grassroots organization that operates hand-to-mouth specifically on donations that we get. So. And how many, uh, how many kids can your facility hold? We can have 24 at any given time. Usually full? Well, anywhere from about 18, 19 is our average. You, you, are you the only program director? Uh, yes. Oh. That is a huge job. Well, you might you must need a fire hose to straighten those kids out. They get they get out of hand you know over what? there. They're good kids. No, they're horrible, horrible <laughs> kids. I, I I don't blame them for being horrible because of uh, where they come from and what they've seen and all that. But uh, you get a couple. You get well. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Are are the guys are they gay? A lot of the guys or are they straight who are just doing gay tricks to make money? Because I'm what? wondering about what happens when you take the 16-year-old girls and you mix them with the 16-year-old guys under the same roof. It works out real well when the boys are gay or cross-dressers. When, yeah. when they're straight, That's it's, what I uh, it's a whole different uh, yeah. ball game. Yeah. You know, immediately when we have a straight boy in there, the whole place turns upside down. Yeah. Not, wouldn't, not a bad angle for a crafty, uh, horny 16-year-old guy to get himself picked up and head into the house of hookers over here and just uh, run amok for a weekend before he gets tossed out. You know what I'm saying, Drew? I, I know you would have done that. I understand that. I wish I had I one of those cards when I was in high school. Uh, pick me up. I need help uh, just for the weekend. Though. All right. So uh, now, uh, I'm done offending everybody. <laughs> we will. Uh, I think. I think it's a. Uh, I come from a long line of people who uh, tried to help people. They couldn't help themselves too much, but they ended up uh, helping. Uh, my dad was. Uh, a director of education at this place called Five Acres out in uh, Pasadena. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of troublemakers going to school over there, and uh, and I come from a long line of uh, helpers. Drew, do you? No, Drew, you? No. 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 They make money. Yeah, that's all right. They abuse their own. Are you ready to go to the phones here, Drew? Let's do. This is uh, Nicole, who is twenty. Nicole. Yep. What's going on? Um, not much. I. I'm finding it really hard to say no to having sex, like with my boyfriend that I've been with for like a year or so. And we have sex like three to four times a day, I'd say about four times a week. Hmm. Uh, so you're having sex like 16 times a week? Yeah. You go yeah. to school? You are having trouble saying no, by the way. That's, that's <laughs> well, trouble. It's not like I don't mind it. Like I really do enjoy it and stuff, but sometimes it gets like a little annoying after a little while. <laughs> So you mean you, you may not want to say no on the first time, but on the fourth or fifth time you may want to say no? Yeah. But by then you're so dehydrated you can't talk? <laughs> uh, sometimes. Somebody is compulsive. Either he or she or both. Yeah. Yeah, well, how old is he? He's a year younger than I am. Oh, man. He's going nuts, this kid. But he is, is, is either of you a trauma survivor? Either? No. Mm-hmm. No. No, but this has been going on like with other boyfriends that I've had too since yeah, I was see? like seventeen. She is. Yeah. What's up? Is, was your dad abusive? No. No. Yeah. You love him? Yes. I right, stopped humiliating him then. <laughs> Sex five times a day. Just say no. Then right. is there any manic depression in your What's family? No. Addiction. Um. Yeah. Who's the addict? My aunt. Your aunt. Yeah. Not good enough. Well, who, who's her sister? I mean, who is she the sister of? My mom. Mom, sister. And your mom doesn't drink? No. And your parents are together? No. All right. But uh, nobody abused you? She has no trouble saying no when we ask her questions. <laughs> you want to have sex? <laughs> Do you, you would, would you like to have some sex with me? <laughs> no, thank you. All right. No. We'll see. Not so hard. You can say no. Yeah. yeah. Girls seem to be able to muster that with me. All right, just pretend you're looking at me when your boyfriend asks you for sex. Okay. Could you do that? Possibly. Well, do you want to say no? It, it seems like you can say it, and it doesn't seem like you have anything up with you that's so uh, insurmountable that you couldn't do it. Right. Well, I feel like I'd be letting him down in some way. Like, a lot of times I won't go to, like, I'll call in sick from work because I just want to stay home, you know? Mm. See, I, he, he may be sexual compulsive. Maybe she just codependent to all that. Yeah, you know, what what's your fantasy that what what do you think will happen if you let him down? You think he'll break up with he'll you? Leave you? I don't I never even thought about like what he would Why don't you think about it? Why don't you begin be, to tune into what you want in the relationship and go ahead and assert that. I mean, you, listen, you're going on to the point to, to comply with his needs that you're actually harming yourself physically. You're hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. And you you're well, doing I, you're, you're she affecting say she was hurting she herself. Said it gets so, so far that it's annoying. It's done An annoying, she said. Right. Uh, you're not you're not hurt. Are you didn't sprain your vagina or anything, did you? <laughs> no. It's not, it's not uncomfortable. No. 
No. Okay. All right. So see yeah, that but you're missing through? work and things. It's, it's starting missing to have consequences. Work. And having consequences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but missing work. Where do you work? At an uh, Arby's? Where? Just at a hotel. Yeah, they don't miss you over there. I know. There plenty of qualified people. They're happy when you don't show up. Yeah. Do you yeah. guys have anything to add to this? What? How old were you the first time you ever had sex? I'm so sorry, I didn't hear you. How old were you when you first had sex? Oh, uh, I was 16. All right. So no. we, we expect under 12. All right, everything's fine with you, so say no. Okay. Anna, you have anything for her? Any, nothing? Does it, sound, does it sound like normal hey, behavior to you? Tr true. Um, if you don't have anything to say, well, don't for twist me, her arm. I started at 11, so I don't really have anything to say about that. Was it kind of compulsive? Um, no, it was just because my sister's kind of... It was my sister's saying, well, you should have sex because we've all had sex kind of thing. Hmm. Will they set you up with an older guy? Mm, no, actually, I went out and found myself an older guy. <laughs> and then so. did you become compulsive after that? No. no. No, I've never enjoyed it. Never. So I, don't, I, I really don't. But sometimes people that don't enjoy it still compulse about it. Mm -mm. No. All right. Another dead end. Drew just went down. All right. Well, can we let her go? <laughs> yes. She, she can just say no. That's right. All right. Fantastic. James. Yes. 21. All right, Drew. I'm going to have to get in that seat real soon. Yeah. All What's right. going on? Hey, am I on? Yeah. Oh, great. Um, first, I want to tell you guys how much of an honor it is to be on your show. I mean, I love you guys you so much for everybody. Thank you. Um, Adam, I think you're the funniest guy around. That's true. Uh, I think, actually, your show should be played in every, like, high school for a period. You know, <laughs> so everybody gets to listen to it. <laughs> here. A requirement. Yeah, yeah, and a requirement, and so they can graduate. Yeah, maybe we take uh, we take the two hours, we condense it down to one hour, and we play it during homeroom. Hmm? Yeah, exactly, homeroom. That'd be all right, as long as we're in for a taste. I mean, you know, we need a little we need a little scratch. That's not free. Fine. What's your question, James? Well, um, I've got one really serious question, but I thought of one uh, while I was waiting. Uh, I remember hearing you guys say something about a DNA test that can tell you if you're HIV positive or not. Right, 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 right. Is that true? Yeah, yes. it's available, and it's it's pretty rapidly. Uh, act, you know, it, it's you turn positive like, within two weeks on that one. Yeah, they use it uh, in the porn industry. Yes, yeah, so you can find out in like two weeks. I believe so. I they thought it was faster. That. They also have one that that you can um, do cheek. in your mouth. That's an antibody test, though. Mm -hmm. That's that's still a yeah. six months. I, I thought the DNA one was immediate. You say it's two weeks? It's yeah, two it's weeks. two weeks to wait for the results. For the DNA one. Mm -hmm. And it's a little more you know, expensive. Is it right away? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. It's like 50 or 60 bucks. It's or more expensive. Like that. It's more expensive and isolate. And it's hard to find. It's only in certain testing sites. But I, I think two weeks is the window they generally use. It, it, it may be positive within a shorter period of time, but I think two weeks is what they like to wait. All right, James. What was well, your serious question? Okay. Uh, w well, there was one other one. I've done a lot of drugs in the past. Is like this the serious one? No, this is one right, other one. Well, listen. It'll be uh, really quick. What do you think? We're dedicating the first hour to James and his uh, goddamn problems? <laughs> I'll be really That's quick. That's the one you called in for, <laughs> jackass. All right, you want me to tell you that one? Yeah, I'd like that one. <laughs> Jesus right. Christ, he's sitting there, like, improvising. Like, when you got a trace going, you got some FBI. Yeah, this is your best, telling your biggest stall. fan, dude. Relax. I don't care. I've had enough of him. Okay, all right. Um, there was this one night where me and my this girl that I started dating, we uh, I was with my best friend, and we all had a bunch of beers and some prescription drugs, and uh, we ended up getting really partying a lot. And then later on, we went back to my house, and we ended up laying like on my bed, and we were just talking. And then you know the girl, my she, we were just dating at the time. She crawled on top of me, and we started kissing and stuff. And then um, I was like, well, why don't you give um, my friend Steve a kiss? And so he... All right, so the one, one thing like another. Uh, unless Steve is the name of your penis, that was a bad choice. And what's, your, what's the question? <laughs> well, so they ended up... We know. What, what's the question? Why is it... Why... Wait, what did they end up doing? They ended up starting to have sex. And then we no. had a threesome. Oh, okay. Good time. Okay, and... Well, like, hold on, Drew. You, Drew, are you reading that on the screen? No. I can, you tell it's where he's going. Just listen. I, I know, but you get, you get to the point where he says she, she gave him a kiss, and then you cut him off and say, you, you're cutting off the good part. Yeah. I didn't know they had sex. Yeah. So you, you guys went all the well, way, Well, shaking huh? her head. Do you have something to say about that? Yeah, we basically... Come on. Oh, disgusting. leave her alone, disgusting. Drew. Good. It's absolutely horrible. revolting. Drew, you got to get out of that chair, buddy. <laughs> What's so you had sex? There's something magical about this chair. And you, it, there, there is when I'm in it. With you, it's just like putting a couple sandbags in it. <laughs> um, Never. 
All right, so you you watched you watch your friend have sex with your your girlfriend, and the question is, and then we started we switched off, but now it's like that's right. Well, at least he got some. Yeah, now it was just like three hours long, four hours long. But anyway, like we started dating after that, me and the girl, and now I kind of like I don't really respect her a whole lot. Did he describe her as his girlfriend? Yeah. yeah. Was she your Was she your girlfriend when this all came down? No. No, we just started dating. I see. And so now you have trouble taking her seriously. Yeah. I see. Well, yeah. that's not surprising. So when you're when you're done with the orgy, you got her phone number? Well, I knew her. Uh, create all sorts of powerful feelings that you can't predict. Whether or not you're in a relationship and then bring a third person in, whether or not it's somebody, an acquaintance that you develop some powerful feelings for in the course of a threesome, there's still very conflicted, very powerful feelings that result, and they always, essentially always are unhealthy. It, des it destroys relationships, or it disrupts them at least. And uh, this is not the greatest, healthiest sort of no, it, foundation it, it, for a it's relationship. It's doomed, James. Yeah. Doomed. Do you hear me? It's not going anywhere. So, so I should just, uh, just enjoy yourself. It, well, you, you weren't getting married to her anyway. I know. I just uh, have some fun, see where it goes, and don't you take the pressure off yourself. I mean, think about this, Drew. How many relationships have you freaked out over that turned out to be nothing, where you could have just enjoyed them? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, let's, uh, one, two, 75. 75, yeah. right. I mean, I mean, that, that's my point. Every guy does this. You, you, you get some girlfriend, you're 17 years old, she's 16. She slept with one of your buddies from the soccer team before she slept with you. <laughs> you obsess about it. You have a crappy 18-month uh, relationship where you obsess about her sleeping with one of your buddies, and then you break up. Now, the reality is you, you probably were going to go off to college somewhere and break up anyway. You might as well just have a good time. You know what I mean? It's like it's like showing up the, to Disneyland and obsessing over when you have to leave. <laughs> Just go ride the goddamn Matterhorn, and when it's time to go, you go. You come back another day, right? Oh, that relationships were that simple as a trip to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and, and being with me is not like riding the Matterhorn, by the way. No, no. It's a small by the world. Way, just being a partner of yours on radio is not... <laughs> All right, Jackass, you're getting right out of that <laughs> oh, yes, seat. Yes, I am indeed. We're going to take a little break. Drew, you want to send us a break? You going to screw that up real quick before we go? Or? Uh, right. Oh, Adam, why don't you read this? No, you read it. There. That's no, you, no. buddy. Uh, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, buddy. I'm going to talk about the guy whose girlfriend died in a car crash if you let me read That's it. That's fine. I'll find some humor in it. All right. Will's 18. His girlfriend died in a car crash, and she he is having visions where he's seeing her. Beautiful. <laughs> Very funny. We'll be right back. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Oh, I'm just getting angry because. V hold ahead. on a All second, right. Jackal. Vicky Valet and uh, Anna are both here. Vicky uh, works for uh, Children of the Night. Anna is uh, one of the Children of the Night, who's, uh, I, I guess you could call her a graduate of the uh, program. She graduates next week. Next Friday. Oh, they do have a graduation? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have cake it's a big balloons. Deal. Um, the balloons we let off, and each person gives the person that's graduating a wish for them. In in the balloon? Yeah, well, they oh. let go the balloon I out see. in the air, and yeah. each balloon gets a certain wish. It's very right. emotional. These kids work hard for it. Right. Not to uh, land in the Sepulveda Basin, I think, would be no. my wish for my balloon. It's uh, You guys are pretty close to the Sepulveda Basin there. It's God's country out there, really. So your planes fly around. So I, uh, I spent three days looking for a model airplane. I crashed <laughs> in uh, in weeds uh, about eight feet high. It's good times. I actually brought a ladder down there and set it up so I could see in the middle of this weed field. I was like a conductor at the halftime of a football game, you know, leading the band. Oh, anyway. Well, uh, Goddamn, I'm pissed right. off now. Because, now, what uh, are you mad about? Because uh, this, the Children of Night program is a 90-day program, which I think is fantastic. And it just highlights for me how pathetic... The medical system is right now. We have to fight for five days, seven days, ten days to hospitalize people, with, or even just put people in a highly structured environment it's who have similar history as you. And, and anyone who works with people with these sorts of issues knows you need. Yeah, I mean, a month is sort of minimum, but the world at large, the medical system today, will give you like four to eight days with someone. It's like the benefit this. of being privately funded and oh. doing it our way. You know, but everyone knows works. it works. And all right, oh, settle, settle Drew. Drew's not going to coffee over. He's so excited. <laughs> you care too much, Drew. I keep telling you not to care. You, you do take keep, some of those sleeping uh, pills, you, you wash it down with some uh, red wine like I do, you're, you're mellow. You're good, unless you're driving. Then you're pissed as hell. That's a different situation. Phone number for any uh, of you out there who may be between the ages of 11 and 17, or uh, maybe an older gent in his 30s with a fake ID. 
The number is uh, 1-800-551-1300. If you're uh, on the street, if uh, you got a pimp that's uh, turned bad, if uh, you got trouble, if you need a place, this is where you it, should it's go, It's only right? people who have been involved in prostitution. Those are the kids that we work with in the shelter. How, the how do you establish that that's what they've been doing? How do you know that? Them. But, ask I mean, them. they could lie to get in. Well, you, well, you sniff them. You can tell real quick. I mean, there's yeah. kids, oh, when the you're out on the streets. Yeah. You, this is where my dog comes in. I got, I got uh, dogs that sniff people, so, you know, know where they've been, you know what I'm saying? Venereal sniffing dogs, every kind of dog. I could have a dog worked up for you guys, worked by the front door. We train our people to do that on the hotline, so... Oh, they sniff, sniff it out on the phone? Nice. And, and yeah, I guess, uh, and plus, it's probably not the kind of thing that most people would say they did if they weren't actually doing it. I mean, you probably don't get a whole ton of people claiming... And we, we often have to read between the lines. You have a, a child that has been maybe staying with a 27-year-old man. She's 13. Mm. She's... You know, <laughs> I'll tell you, you, you have a uh, privately funded place that's doing great work with the uh, kids, the victims. I'd like to open my own house called the uh, Adams House of Hell. The slaughterhouse? Just a Adam's big pit. We, the good news is, is we could put it in Van Nuys because <laughs> uh, that place is a hell. And no one notice. Yeah, no, no one, no. I dig a big pit I in their 30s that are uh, keeping an eye on the 13-year-olds down in the pit. And uh, you know, we do an hourly uh, hosing where I, uh, I take a, a fire extinguisher full, filled with the urine and fecal matter, and we just uh, spray them every, every hour. I ring a big cowbell, and I tell a story from, uh, from my high school days, like the same high school football story over and over again. Well, one of the things Slowly we help our kids insane. do is to put these guys in jail, <laughs> and we do a lot of accompanying them in the court, holding their hands. Visions. Well, like, no, like, she's like the only person like brought me away from my bed, family and stuff. Yeah, but listen, like, yeah, but then, like, do you want to know, about, like, the, you wanna know like, about the visions? Yeah, I'm like freaking out. I'm like okay. an old person. Like listen. San Diego State. I mean, I'm well, like... Listen, the, these... San Diego State. It's, yeah. it's very well, common... It's, well, wanna, that's junior college. It, yeah. It's very common when there's been a, a sudden, unexpected death for there to be these sorts of experiences. However yeah. you want to explain them, I can just tell you they're common and they don't necessarily mean there's anything psychiatrically awry. Right. But it does speak to how intense this trauma has been. Right. And that, indeed, if, you're, if you are willing to get a little treatment, get a little therapy, you know, it's a, you're going to have a post-traumatic stress disorder from this. Yeah. And to I've be been, freaking yeah. out in regards to be triggered by all sorts of things, have panic attacks, trouble sleeping, and your mood's going to be a mess for a while. That's normal. That's yeah. what you expect somebody to happen after they've been through something like this. And there is treatment, and people can't help you with it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. I mean, it, you sound like, hey, here's the good news. For someone who's been through what you've been through so recently, you're st you're still laughing. you sound yeah. amazingly yeah. intact. You, you just, but nobody... Your show's brought me through everything. Well, thanks. In no. the shop, you know, I'm, I'm cutting metal, you know, about those metal workers. Yo, and, uh, yeah. And uh, I laugh at everything you say. All right, well, listen, you got to get a little therapy. you got to work with this. But the fact that you see her everywhere, that's completely that's okay. normal. That's fine. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you're... It's it's fresh on his mind. It it, it just it, these these are extremely intense right. experiences, and naturally there will be an intense fallout. All right, we're going to take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Rick, who's 19, had sex with girl, and then they had sex, and then they had sex. What? She uh, oh, she pooped in the bed. There we go. Fantastic. After this. Yeah, I like this song. What group is this? Oh, Offspring. Oh, that's a yeah. good band, that yeah, Offspring. Yeah. They're, uh, they they put those riffs together, that Offspring. Nice guys. So far, I heard Kevin Bean talking about them almost destroying the uh, venue for the Acoustic Christmas two years ago when they played. Oh, yeah. It was the Shrine. Yeah. They said, oh. they said it was the Universal or something. I said, no, it was the Shrine. I almost brought the whole damn balcony down. Yeah, yeah. No, that that was that, yeah, that was a shrine. Yeah. yeah. People were bouncing up on that yeah. thing. Yeah, I was scared we we're going to lose some teenagers. Fine though, good riddance. That's what I said. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. It's uh Love Line tonight. Uh speaking of uh music and uh venues, we got a uh, little thing called the Acoustic Christmas coming up this weekend on the Mother Station. The mother of all stations, by the way, uh K-Rock. Number uh number 1 in uh, Los Angeles is K-Rock, English-speaking, number uh, 27 overall. <laughs> number one. There's uh, 14 Armenian stations and uh, 16 uh, Hispanic-speaking stations above them, but uh, still number one in the, uh, in the English-speaking stations. And uh, tonight we uh, have as a guest uh, some of the folks from uh, Children of the Night, and that's where the proceeds of this concert are going to. And uh, when I say proceeds, I mean proceeds. 48.50 a ticket. 
Jesus Christ. In addition, there's a band called Eight Stop Seven. Is that the other band? Oh, and eight they, Stop Seven, And yeah. they, uh, the proceeds from their CD are actually entirely going to Children of the Night, which is an organization, a residential program for treating uh, young 11 to 17-year-olds with history of uh, having been out on the street and in prostitution. And let me say this about this, uh, for those of you who want to donate some money to this. Uh, every penny, it's like you donate a dime, you get back a dollar. I mean, if you take a look at where a lot of these kids are going now, uh, most of them if, if you more yeah them in a jail. lot in jail uh, uh, it, at least they ain't paying taxes i mean there's there's trouble here you, you know what i'm saying yeah. we should it, we should get behind this forget about from a compassion standpoint just pure monetary just from a purely monetary standpoint we should get behind stuff like this oh, right 80 percent of the kids that we work with stay off the streets wow so that's huge it works. Huh? Yeah. They kill them, bury them in the basement so they don't know. get it back on the street. Actually, our basement is pretty small and it contains nothing but food. <laughs> hey, well, that's what they call it. It's the soil and green. They're using the they feed. That's where we put the kids that didn't listen to They it. feed the yeah, kids. Sure. To the, yeah, they feed the naughty <coughs> to, the, to the righteous. That's my plan. <laughs> that's what I'm going to run. To when the I, basement monster. When I run for president, that's my only, that's my platform. I will feed the naughty to the righteous. You know who you are. Thank you. Now, this A Stop 7 CD, it's a great opportunity for kids to help kids because it's only $1.99. Wow. And uh, if you can purchase it at any Tower Records until uh, January, you can purchase it on the website at towerrecords.com. We're going to play a song from it next great. hour, I think, too. So. Buck 99. Hey, it's worth it just to just to throw it for Buck ninety nine. I'll pay Buck ninety nine so I can throw it at somebody. No, it's actually a really good song. I know, but They're even then, I throw group. it. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. When, and, I have um, the yeah. other CD. And I also have that one. And Question Everything is a very, 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 very good song. They're, uh, they're good-looking lads, I'll tell you that. And they're real nice Not guys, too. Oh, you're gay. <laughs> oh, yeah. The truth comes My out. My favorite is Evan. Yeah, Evan. That's the one in the middle? Um, it's the singer. Or is the he? The singer. Yeah, he's the top one. Yeah, I did the math there. The other two are trolls, huh? <laughs> and the picture's Drew and I take. Oh. Or we all look bad. Uh. All right. Let's hop on the phones. Rick? Nothing to do with the subject matter. No. You're uh, 19. What's up? Well, how's it going, guys? Good. Excellent. Um, I had a crazy night last night. I was uh, hanging out with a girl, and we started having sex. And she had to get up and go to the bathroom real quick, which was fine. Comes back. Same thing happens. She needs to go again. And comes back a third time. And we start having sex again. You know, it's getting more heated. And I start smelling something, right? Well, you know where this is going. You explained it before the commercial. It was smell like crap. Yeah. And so I excuse myself, come back in a little bit, and, uh, you know, she's like, yeah, well, I guess I should go. You know, it was kind of like she knew what happened. I don't know. What's your question? So she, she leaves. Well, I'm just telling you the scenario here. And I noticed there's some, uh, there's a little. We, we understand where you're going with this. Well, no, What's the I don't understand exactly. Who was this girl? A uh, girl I was dating. You dating her for a while? Not too long, though. How long? Uh, a oh, couple weeks. Years. First time we ever had sex. So you'd, you'd gone out on a handful of dates. Sure. Okay, see you, Rick. Idiot. Yeah. What do you mean, sure? Yeah. I, don't no. care if he's, I, don't, I don't care if he's making it up or not. He I don't like that sure up. answer. Yeah. Well, the problem with, 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 with everyone who calls this show who's bogus is... They say a lot of nonsensical things, like, I met this girl, she crapped the bed, so it's like I smelled something, so I picked up and left. Okay, how do you know her? Um, she's my girlfriend. What do you mean? So you picked up and left? Uh, well, we didn't know each other that long. Yeah, it's just, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, these guys would be, they'd be horrible. I mean, a, a cop could get them to confess to murders they weren't even, weren't even in the same country for. Yeah. I, it, it's really, it's, it's one of the cornerstones of being stupid, Drew. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Mia? Yes. You're 26? Yes, sir. What's up? I just have a question here, you know, the, the curiosity thing? Yeah, boy, you're, you're 26? Yes, sir. Wow, why is it, where are you from? Uh, uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yes, sir. All right. Well, you, you sound older than 26. What's going on? So I what, really? What's the question? Okay. The question is, is about orgasm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where exactly does the like gusher orgasm, you know, all the fluid, the, the you know, the real orgasm? <laughs> for men or for a male or a female? For females. For like, not all all women gush. Gushing is. Oh, not all women gush. I understand. Right. I didn't gush for years, but like I gush now. 
Oh, yeah. It's real good. And I'm just kind of like curious. Sure. Of, uh, you could uh, you could put out one of those, uh, oh, one of yeah, those like logs sure. in the fire, like right? The, that west the chest and the whole, you know, yeah. the thingy thingy. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's really neat. It's just a... Uh, there, there are a whole series of glands down there that uh, Skeen's glands and Barthlin's gland and whatnot that produce fluid. And uh, there are glands in the wall of the vagina, and they all have potential to produce fluid that can be released. Yeah. Uh, and so it just, like, produces the fluid, yeah. and it's just... It's glandular material in yeah. the area. That's fine. Wait, wait, you want okay, to collect? Oh, it's fine, I'm sure. You want to collect it and use it for something? <laughs> no, no, I don't think I want to collect it's and good, use uh, it. It's anything. good wallpaper remover. Oh, you think? Hey, yeah. I was going to hang some wallpaper next week, but I need to take some down, so maybe after tonight I'll... Uh... Who is this, Ellie Mae? <laughs> Ellie Mae. <laughs> even, even her saying Ellie Mae makes her sound like Ellie Mae. Say Ellie Mae again. Ellie Mae. <laughs> you got a rope holding your pants up? How did you know? I know. You, you love them critters, don't you? You know it. All right. Uh, you're not, you, you, your uh, dad doesn't have a rocking chair strapped to his pickup truck? No, nah, man. My Where dad granny rides? dead. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Oh, now I'm going to hell for a fifth time. <laughs> all right, Mia. Good luck with that novelty vagina of yours, all right? All right thank you. All right, good times. We're going to take ourselves a little break. We'll be back. Yeah, wonderful uh, listeners come in and uh, bring us some... Uh, some uh, some confection. Uh, children and I is what we're talking about. Phone number, if uh, you're between the ages of uh, 11 and 17 and uh, are uh, in the uh, field of, uh, well, prostitution, male or female, uh, out on the street or with a pimp or running away from home and uh, want to know uh, how to get some help, this is the number to call. 1-800-551-1300. one 800 551 one three zero zero. We're having a uh, big concert out here in uh, Los Angeles for the uh, Mother Station K Rock this weekend, the Acoustic Christmas, and the proceeds will be going to the Children of the Night. Vicky uh, Ballet is here tonight, and uh, Anna, who's uh, one of the uh, graduates. Uh, have you graduated yet, or are you going to graduate? Um, my three month anniversary. Usually, I only we only stay there for three months, but mm -hmm. my three month anniversary was a month ago. And uh, and what are your plans now? I'm going to go to an independent living. I took the um, CHSPE, which is the California Pro High School Proficiency Exam. Uh -huh. And, it's um, not the GED anymore? No. That's this this is different. I'm going to actually get a high school diploma. If I pass this, I will find out on the 18th. I see. And this then is I will so go to um, a college, a community college. and Oh, no. Hopefully get... No, no, dear Lord, no. Yes. No. And, and, and no, working yeah. computers. Listen, prostitution was worse than going to the community college. No. no don't go to the community I, college. I'll I teach to. you about computers. Oh, I I'll already teach know. You. I'll teach you on my time. Vicky taught me how to completely... Take a part of computer. All right. And, well, then yeah. you don't need to go to community college. <laughs> Actually, you do. <laughs> you, listen, I know. Listen, it, it, prostitution is no stigma, but going to community college, having that on your permanent record, that'll haunt you for the rest of your life. People, <laughs> that'll follow you around. Believe me. When <laughs> your husband finds out you went to community college, that may be a deal breaker. All right. So uh, now I'm, I'm interested in this test. A GED will give you sort of the uh, GED, equivalent you've, you've kind be, of thing. In but California, you, you have to be eight, close to 18, three, three months your 18th birthday to take the GED. It's five different mm. tests, and, and it, it works. It's a high school diploma. Do you take five different tests, you five or you different get one tests. of five? But the CHSP is kind of doesn't have the stigma of the GED. GED you take when you didn't, couldn't make it in high school. The CHSPE right. was, uh, I believe, originally started for acting kids that wanted to not have to have a tutor on the set. So it's, uh, it's a little bit different of a test. And more involved, I'm guessing. Well, it's a lot more writing, a lot more reality-based in, in terms of... What uh, was that first one, Drew? What'd she say? Using a pen to... Bye -bye? Yeah. Oh, oh, pen. A pen. writing of it. Yeah. Well, it's like a uh, pencil with uh, ink in it, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It makes little characters on a page. And then people read those? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? Adam. Yeah. Read flash. L the, l wait, read. I'm yeah. impressed. Yeah. Well, I know other people have talked about I've heard, heard a guy talking about it on the bus. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have uh, a school in the shelter, and part do. of what we do is teach these kids to to pass with some of these tests so they can actually finish high school or at least get up to whatever level they need to, so they can move on. Wow. Okay. So, uh, so uh, Anna, you're going to do that. You're going to take all that. You get into uh, your computer program, and then, uh, pow, you're uh, successful. You're out on your own, taking care of business. Yes. God love you. That's beautiful. And and where now? Where are you living now? You said you're children of the night right now. Oh, and then you go into a did you Las call Vegas it? to independent living program. I'll have my own apartment. Like a with one roommate, uh, different than. But, but I mean, for him, for his sake. Oh yes. It, that's in Vegas. Yes. Well, that doesn't seem like the place to go. Well, seems like more trouble. For me, over there. I don't have a lot of family to go to, and my yeah. dad isn't 
really, I mean, he just got out of prison, so can't go to his house. Right. Well, so this is the best thing for me. All right, so you go to Vegas. And if it doesn't work, you can always I can come, come back. back. All right. You promised me you stay away from that slots of fun. Yeah. Do you ever have any, any impulses to go back? No. Not anymore. You did for a while? No, I, it wasn't. No, I only did that for survival. It wasn't because I wanted a pimp or because I wanted the money. A lot of the money that I got, I spent on other people, not necessarily myself. Um, I, I spent the money on food, clothing, and a place to live. And the rest, once I spent it on a $300 on a little boy's birthday party, a neighbor's birthday party because his parents couldn't buy, buy him anything. So not, not all of the money went to me. Right. But uh, fast money goes as fast as they make it, mm -hmm. so it's, they can never have anything right. to show for it. Yeah. They, yeah, that's why my family always told me, make the slow money. Make the glacier-type money. If you can get a nickel an hour, that's a much better than a hundred an hour. You won't spend it so fast. <laughs> well, particularly when you've been turning tricks to get it, it's you want it out of your hand. It's, the, the memory is just you want that out of your hand as quickly. That's interesting. And, and yeah, and, and well, also, when you're, when you're 15 years old and you got a few hundred bucks... I imagine you could go through that. The majority of our kids are turning that money over to a pimp. I mean, very few of these kids get to keep even a penny of it. I mean, the pimp refers to it as his money, his hairspray, his everything. Right. It's so, Anna, you, you had a pimp, right? No, I didn't. No pimp. Uh -uh. Eliminate the middleman. Yes. So you didn't have that situation. Mm -hmm. All right. Drew, you still with your pimp, or yeah, did you guys part ways? No, no. I just, personally, I can't see myself or anybody else getting the crap beat out of them for money that they didn't make or they did make and they spent it on something when they did the work they went out and did it and some some right right no i know no we is going to kick this because you know with the s word hold on yeah. a second there anderson no we we got the same thing it's called a manager <laughs> <laughs> they don't do anything, we pay that. But at least it gives you a percentage. A pimp takes it all. Yeah, yeah that's true. He does cut us in. <laughs> it's nice of them. All right, uh, Karen. Hi. Okay, well, I'm 20 and I'm a virgin. Mm -hmm. And I actually met you guys last night when, um, when Mika was there as part of her little entourage. But basically, I was the... So wait a minute, which one were you? I was the blonde girl in the all black with the stripes around her boobs. <laughs> stripes around her boobs. Yeah. Oh, the daughter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So well, wait a minute. Wait. I'm. I'm trying. I was trying to make you. You're the one driving the Porsche, right? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out this. I. I we. Uh, Minka brought in uh, with her an entourage last night, <laughs> which were her boobs. But then there were people too who came, and uh, there there was her husband, right? Right. Her, her manager. Her manager slash uh, concubine uh, husband. Uh, you slash know. best friends slash best friends boyfriend who happens to be my dad <laughs> so i was the daughter that tagged along because you were the daughter now uh you so, uh you got a you got kind of a rack on you too is that <laughs> uh, something that was oh natural god gave you that yes really yeah i'm oh. only 20 oh jesus christ but basically i mean i've had a totally normal childhood and then when i turned 16 my dad went through his midlife crisis no kidding you know, he started dating all these little girls that were like my age practically 24 year old porn stars yeah now your and dad so basically i'm completely shut off to relationships and i just want to know how i can like start opening up how, do you, like, how do you how does she get over her dad well we we, we met your dad last night right um, he's a great guy he's completely involved in my life what does he do for a living um we're in the jewelry industry no that's trouble <laughs> No, that's a good thing. And, uh, geez, he, didn't, he barely had an accent. I didn't, I didn't know he was in the jewelry. I thought he had to have a strong Middle Eastern accent to be in the jewelry. <laughs> Not in Beverly Hills. <laughs> no, okay. All but, right, so what, where'd you get that? Uh, geez, she's driving a $50,000 car. Just, I bought it myself, actually, not turning tricks like other people. But, you, you weren't turning uh, I've tricks. my entire life there after school and commissions and things. I mean, basically, instead of concentrating on boys, I've turned my stuff toward school and 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 work and friends and so i'm just sort of wondering how i can now sort of open myself up and allow myself to actually have a real connection Where, with, where's your with mom? a male figure where's your mom? my mom is my best friend and i've oh, moved no, with her. No, 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 no until no, i was 18 bad. and then i moved out on my own all right so you but you're so. still working with your dad right no no my father does other things now i work with my mom she owns the store what does he do, does he do now um he's in the, okay. the stone industry he does hotels and things yeah. Stone industry? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, Different he, kind of stones, not diamonds. 
Yeah, he he does like. Is that a code for something? No, no. no he's no, he's no. doing like marble and granite exactly. and that, that kind of work. Yeah. What is your dad's nationality? Because I, I, I've never met a guy who. He's from New York. He's from the Bronx. And that's it. He's an American guy? Mm -hmm. Wow, he's the only guy I've ever met. Every guy. He, he, he has the two. Hold on. He, he, he's, he has the number one Middle Eastern occupations and number two. Oh, really? His number one is uh, the wholesale jewelry maybe, stuff. Maybe he's Lebanese or something. Yeah. Number two is the guys who do the countertops, the granite, the floor, yeah. the marble, all that. They're, it's all Middle Eastern. Well, maybe they're here. i, I got to get to the bottom of this. What happened? Was he <laughs> adopted? How did this happen? No, he... What's his nationality? We're Jewish, but... All right. Nah, it's starting to come together. It's starting to come together. <laughs> At least we got the jewelry part checked off the list. All right. And uh, where's his family from? All from New York. No, no. They're, got you, here to marry my mom. Your ancestors. Where are the ancestors from? Um, Russia. Russian Jews. Yeah. It's not working. He's not going to last in that <laughs> stone business. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and you, let's, uh, let me just talk about your cup size for just one second. I'm a 34D. Wow. I'll tell you. Yeah. You see, I saw her last night with these other girls. You, you got. Well, I look concave compared to that. No, no, you're you're convex. Don't don't worry. But you hanging around with those other girls, people kind of do the math. <laughs> you understand? They figure you're you're running with that crowd. You're in that industry. That's yeah, I mean, people your... think my dad and I date. Like when we go to dinners and things, it's very strange. Like a girl's come mm -hmm. up to our table and been like, "Oh my God, you know, what are you doing right. cheating on me?" Right. 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 My daughter. So now yeah. I, I know they. And see... then the whole thing is completely absurd. Uh, yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. What? So you want to know how to have a relationship with a guy? Basically, it's time. I'm 20. It's like I think you know my friends have boyfriends. It, it's it's something I think is completely necessary. But I know that I'm totally closed off. To well, not only not only are you closed off but the more important thing is how do we prevent you from sort of going after dad when you decide to open up because yeah, you, i think you, it's totally gross like i i yeah but you, you consider in, it but inadvertently you're gonna you're gonna sort of uh, pick someone who might treat you in a similar way what what kind of guys have you been attracted to in the past like i won't even like allow myself to i mean when i when i have it's been what is what is the what does it feel when you start to open yourself up I don't even think I even let it get to that point. I right, think I just sort of freak out. Like, I've never really been on a date date. Like, I have a lot of close friends. Well, well you're not a virgin, are you? Yeah, I am. Oh. I know. That, oh. I know. I've kissed six people in my uh, life. Right, now, hold on. Hold on a second. Ann, you were here last night. Producer Ann? Yeah, you know who we're talking about, right? Just a big rack sticking out of the sweater. Then uh, I talked to her last night. We're, we're leaving, and she goes, uh, hey, this uh, place over on uh, Las Palmas is really going off. Hugh Hefner's going to be there. I'm going to go there and party. It's like 1230 at night. I say, i got to go home crying masturbate. <laughs> Not in that order. And then I see her pulling out of the parking lot in a convertible Porsche right, right after I pull out. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I take the Porsche. I take the rack. I take the Hugh, Hugh Hefner uh, party on a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday night. And I think to myself, okay, just like a porn star or something. I see your dad and <laughs> like Minka's manager and everything. I got like porn star. I would bet a hundred bucks on a porn star. Virgin. Very bizarre. What line was she on there, uh, Drew, uh, too? Karen? Yeah. Wow. What, now, here's what I can't figure out. How how did you get so turned off by guys when your dad just went south recently? Well, I mean, it sort of went it's, it's down still, right around the time when I like would start having relationships. No, but it's also s same guy. I know, but yeah. but his parents broke up. Zero to thirteen, this guy was a decent enough guy. Yeah, awesome, really, really great dad. And he, why did your parents break up then? Because he started having affairs with these. Yeah. And what what age were yeah. you when that happened? I was pretty much about 14 when he they, 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 went see, through his change of life. And wanted you, you, to see, what you're looking for, you're, she, yeah. what, what that could do is make her fearful of relationships. I understand Not that, but if, if things were hunky-dory, parents were together, family business Still, and all that, mm -hmm. zero to 14... You think that would have been enough to get her a few dates and not freak her out so much? You would think, but still, remember that this is oh mom my god. And dad. I was really fat and ugly when I was young. Too, oh boy, so kind of different. I, sort of, I like, see. You blossomed, morphed, and now my dad dates girls that kind of look like me, and it's just sort of yeah. weird. Oof. Yeah, yeah. I date uh, girls that look like my dad, so I know what you're, you're coming from, a big schnoz and nappy hair, sort of hunched over. That's the way I like them. 
uh, just hairy a, calves. Yeah. A poor role, you know, yeah. role model figure in, well, in a relationship. Yeah. I, I don't know All what right. to do. Well, I mean, is there therapy for this? Yes, yes, yes. yes. If, you, if you have the inclination... Because because we're not getting this, some things need to be sorted out here, oh and, and you're God. not getting at them, and we're not getting. Talk at about them. an untapped resource <laughs> with this one, Jesus Christ! Some guy's going to get his grubby paws on you. He's never going to let go. And listen, once you go, you're going out in a big way. That's what I think. What does that mean? Uh, I think once she opens the floodgates, that's it. She, she, <laughs> she, info and training. Yeah, I say oh, I, I think I think she, she's a virgin until twenty. She's going to sleep with one guy. She's going to sleep with a hundred guys in the first week. <laughs> Maybe two hundred. That's what I say. That's my that's no, my answer. You still no. engaged, Adam? Hmm? No, no. Why? No, you're too young for me. <laughs> well, it's a very bad sign. Yeah. If you're you're to Adam, that that, that now therapy. Are, I, I, categorically, are, are, you, are you into me at all, Karen? You're very very funny, Adam. Yes, we'll see. You're great. We'll see. But yeah. you're too old. Yeah. See, I'm like your dad. <laughs> Both wearing leather jackets, right? Yeah. But, I mean, Doctor Drew off the air. Do you think you could maybe recommend somebody that? Hold I on. Can forget talk about to? Drew off the air. What do you mean funny? <laughs> What am I? I'm kind of handsome. How are you, Adam? You're hysterical. I listen to the show. I know, but don't I look? I look okay, right? Yeah, you're cute. You're right, much more handsome right, in person right, than right. on television. You know, I'm handsome. She's oh, thank you, handsome. Thank you. Because you, I, you get the funny thing, and it really sounds like they're dodging something there. You attracted me? Uh, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like a compliment. All right, baby. So there you go. I'm going to have my first relationship with Adam Carolla. Yeah, good yeah. times. <laughs> Yeah, Whoa. you can. Uh, you can. I'll tell you what we'll do. You come over to my house. And you can watch me wait to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the way. That's why I work my relationship. That's relation. where you live. I watch, watch TV. Minka. Yeah, we can both watch Minka videos and see where it goes. Number one. All right, you, Karen. You get. You, you, <laughs> wait a minute. Play that again. Number one. Asian big book queen. Number one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this show's getting bizarre. Oh, All right, man. Karen. Go just get a little therapy. Uh, I'll, give her, I'll give a referral. You give a referral? Yeah. yeah. Off the air? Oh, my God. Drew, did you see the rack? Uh, excuse me, girls. I, I mean, this was, I, I couldn't believe she wasn't. I thought she was part of the big boob entourage. She was just, uh, she was like a, uh, she was like a uh, burlap sack full of bobcats. That's how bouncy, she was bouncy. built, that one. Crazy. But virgin. Never. Never would have guessed it in a billion years. All right. Are we ready to move forward here? You're getting paid, Drew? Yeah, yeah, no. Pete? Hello? Pete, you're 25. What's up? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, I got a, I guess it's a couple of questions, but I'll just kind of start like with a little story. Uh, I'm 25. I'm married for already two years. Um, I have a one-year-old daughter already. And um, ever since uh, my wife gave birth, I guess I don't know if it's uh, mentally a problem or physically a problem. She just doesn't have any more sex drive. And Is she on any medication? Uh, is she on any medication? Is she on any medication? No, she's not. Has on she been medication. depressed since the delivery? Um, excuse me. Has she? Yeah, was she this was goes she on. Depressed? Has she been depressed since the delivery? Well, maybe like a month after, but we're already a year after that already right now. Yeah, it, it, she's it, right. Postpartum depression can persist for and can occur and or persist for any time within a year of delivery. Well, right. Drew's wife had it for three years because she had triplets, right? That's right. She's allowed a little more. That's right. Pete? Yeah. Uh, sure. You say she gave birth how long ago? Around a year ago. About a year ago. And how how is she with you? Is she like you? Um, yeah, very much. I mean, we have sex maybe twice a month, maybe once a month, and I, that's really bad. But what well, we well, do, I mean, she really likes it. And What was it like before the baby? It was totally different. I mean, she would be even more of an initiator than I was. Yeah, this may all be the biology, her, her biological change from the pregnancy. Yeah. Is she on birth control now? Um, no, she's not right now. She's on no medication of any kind? No, nothing. All right. Well, nice. sometimes getting on birth control after the uh, pregnancy can sort of kickstart things again. And sometimes it's the stress of being a mom. Sometimes it's the symbolic meaning of being a mom. There's all kinds of things that change after a child enters, the, enters your lives. Pete, are you bugging her for sex? Oh, yeah, I'm bugging her a lot. And she's women women hate about that. It. Yeah, women hate she's that. Yeah. Annoyed. Well, they pretend like, to hate it. If I bug her anymore, she's not going to give it anyway. That's right. Yeah, but it, listen, Pete, you got to change your uh, angle of attack here. You, you know what I mean? This, this, i got a really big problem because I'm, I'm going to work every day. I mean, no matter where I am, I'm all the time horny. Sure. I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, all I right. masturbate maybe three or four times a day. Uh -oh. It's a little light. Yeah. I like to see it uh, get get that up to five or six, but that's a different problem for three or four night. times a day. 
You, you ever get them off at work, Pete? He has to. Be. Um, not at, well. While I'm at work, no. But I, I, I take my car out. I mean, for a ride, maybe. Yeah. He's sure. twenty-five. He takes his car out for a ride. Jesus Christ! Uh, what the hell's that headliner look like? You take your car out from work, or you just yeah take... on the break sometimes. Yeah, I do it on a break. Sure. Other people are sitting around drinking coffee, uh, smoking so they, cigarettes. They, assuming he's an alcoholic. Pete's, uh, <laughs> Pete's uh, taking the pinto around the block for a quick jack break. Uh, I hope you work at night. Do you work at night? Um, no, I work during the day. No, you, you do this during the day. Where do you go in your car during the day so you can get that kind of privacy? Just uh, park in a tunnel or something? No, I got a big car and I got tinted windows. Nice. The, the Jackmobile? Nice. Excuse me? Okay, Pete. <laughs> Where do you work? Well, anyway. Where do you work? What kind of place do you work in? Yeah. I work in a... Well, I don't want to get really specific about myself. Is that all right? I see. All right. Well, you, you haven't... Besides uh, skating out of work to whack off every day, you haven't said anything embarrassing. I don't... Well, it's not every day. I, I see. Every day. All right. said three to four times a day. Well, but sometimes he doesn't get them all in at work. I see. Pete, yeah. Pete here's what you got to do. You got to make her think that you don't care about sex, you care about her. You know what I'm saying? Well, she knows that. All right, mm -hmm. and she's not feeling that way. She knows it, but she don't feel it. And then she needs to talk to her gynecologist about this change because it it may be biologically based. Yeah, I know. That's the first thing that there's nothing in, in the world that she hates more than that. Then what? The gynecologist? Yeah. Uh oh. Well, what's up with that? She got any problems? Do I have any problems? Does she? No. Does she have any issues with that? No, she doesn't. She just hates them. Well, yeah, but did anyone touch her or anything like that? Um, in the past, you mean? Like as a child? Or no, I mean tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say next week. Yeah, well, can I put you down for like parents? No, I'm, put, I'm, put you I'm, down for molestation. I, I got uh, <laughs> I got the nineteenth open. You free? Uh, say between ten and noon for a little molesta little molestation. I'm 120, 100, 200 percent sure that she wasn't. You're two hundred percent. Okay, as opposed to five or six hundred percent. Seems yeah, a little light to me. All right, because once you get over 100%, it goes keep to 1,000%. You can keep going. Well, here's what I'm saying. If you're going to go 200%, now the percentage scale is up to 1,000%, hey, so you're low. I always say 10,000%. <laughs> you know, the thing, uh, the, the thing I like, uh, I love as much as uh, 110% or 200% is uh, <coughs> literally. This guy scared me. I literally jumped 25 feet in the air. Literally. <laughs> literally. I literally jumped out of my skin. Literally. It's like, wait a minute, hold on. Literally? Yes, literally out of my skin. So you, you then, you, you shot out from your skin. And so you say, literally, literally jumped out of my skin, literally. Yeah, see, you, now, see, when you, you, you can't do that with literally, can you? No. Well, I guess you can do 200%, you can do literally. We'll be I, right back. Pete's got to be nice to her. And she's got to go to the gynecologist. Yeah. And we're going to play a song from 8 Stop 7 after this. Yep, love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Tonight, we're uh, talking to a couple of folks from Children of the Night, a very worthy charity, which uh, is going to be the recipient of some money that we're going to raise this weekend over here in the uh, Mother Station uh, Caro Q out here in Los Angeles, the big weenie roast, uh, uh, sorry, acoustic Christmas concert, and uh, all the proceeds are going to Children of the Night, and... Uh, How's that work? Who'd you guys beat out? Do you do, do you have to make a um, Vicky? Do you do you go out and try try to raise funds? Obviously, well, our executive director and founder, her 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 entire time at this point is spent fundraising and and, and trying to make sure we can stay open. So, um, I think we just have a lot of friends. And uh, they approached K Rock, though, obviously. I I don't believe so. I think uh, someone called us. Really? That's nice. Yeah, beautiful. They're good folks over there. We're going to play a song from 8 Stop 7, right? Yeah, they give money to everyone with their employees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be a big parking place for them at the Acoustic Christmas. Yeah, you guys aren't going to the Acoustic Christmas, are you? No. No. All right, we get the money. That's better. Uh, I'm going to get drunk and make an ass of myself. i got to cope. You know, it's those on stages when you announce the band, I can't take that big crowd. i got to take something that knock the edge off a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I've seen you. So you cart me out there in a refrigerator truck, and uh, we'll see how yeah, it works. I'd like to push out a big dolly. Yeah, be, be nice. like Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. All right, this is a band we're going to play now. I have, I, uh, I have no idea who this band is, but I'll tell you, 
uh, this band, all the proceeds that uh, they raise, or at least some of the proceeds. 100% of the proceeds of that uh, single. 100 off this, out of two. Question everything. Out of 200%? Or 110%? 110%. 100%. So that's 50%? A <laughs> $1.99. Uh, off of this single will uh, go to Children of the Night. Yes. A very, very worthy cause. And like I said, buck ninety nine for buck ninety nine, it's worth it just to get your hands on the jacket. Just so you can put other CDs in it, right? Because you know those ears always break <laughs> off. But uh, let's give it a listen. This is uh, 8 Stop 7. Wow, that was good. I was expecting that to be good. That's good. 8 Stop 7 is the name of the band. And uh, you can get the CD where, Vicky? At any Tower Records uh, until January. Or you can order it online at towerrecords.com. And uh, for a very, very uh, worthy cause. You get some good music and uh, you give uh, the money to the right people instead of those uh, pimps who run the uh, record companies. Right, Drew? Otherwise known as the man? That's what I always say. <laughs> Question that everything is the name of that again. Uh, 8 Stop 7 and uh, all the money. And it's a buck ninety nine. Dollar ninety nine. Nothing. That's uh, chump change, especially for me because you know I'm, I'm a millionaire, mm -hmm. literally, literally yeah, a right. millionaire, literally. And you sure. just literally did, jumped out of your skin too. Yeah, literally. All right, ready to. Uh... Who cares? <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. Yes. You're 20. Hi. What's up? Well, I have this really, really like good relationship <laughs> with my mother, and. Did you say good? Yeah, it's really yes. good. I mean, I love her to pieces, and. Mm -hmm. Well, I have, like, a problem when it comes to telling her that I'm gay. I see. You're 20. Okay. Yeah. You have a girlfriend right now? Yes, I've been with her for almost two years now. Okay. Ooh. Where's your dad? My dad? Well, he left home around the same time I did, so. Which was but when? Oh, I see. It didn't have any effect on me, really. When was it you left home? Oh, when I was 18. 18. I see. So they broke up then. Yeah, and he's in another state now. Yeah. So. Do you love him? But... Deep down, yeah. Oh, deep but down. On some level. I do, I do hold some, like, resentment for him because he left my mom and she was really having, like, a hard time, too, so. Uh-huh. That was that only when you were 18 that that all went down or it had been going on for a long time? Yeah, well, they, like, went around maybe when I was, like, eight or nine, they oh. weren't as close as I see. You know, they used to be and stuff like that. What What turned you gay? Anything? Oh. Um... No. Now that? I just, ever since I was little. Just in the girl? I was like, girls, yeah. All right. You're gay. Were you an only child? Mm -hmm. Only child? No. I'm the youngest, though. I see. Of how many? Six. Whoa. <laughs> Good. What, are you guys Catholic? Hi. You guys Catholic? No, we're not religious at all, actually. Yeah, just uh, six kids. Just stupid? <laughs> What's your well, dad do for a living? What? What's your dad do for a living? Um, construction. Oh, fantastic. I'm sure you guys live like kings on his salary. <laughs> Idiots. Yeah. All right. So uh, you're you're the youngest, right? Yeah. You say good. So everyone's out of the house. Um, all but one. All right. Yeah. And you have like a, a million nieces and nephews. Yeah, I just got my um, my second great niece. Great yeah, niece. Great niece. Yeah, my nieces are having children now. <laughs> oh my god. They need me and stuff. Like oh. <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, we uh, listen. God bless you for being gay and not having any kids. You know, uh, I wish the whole family would go gay. And uh, do you do you, re do you think you need to, is now the time to sit mom down and tell her? Well, I don't know if now would be a good time because the holidays are coming and things are really tight for her right now. And her mom's, like, almost dying. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, she's really sick. Let her, let her mom die. <laughs> or you go over there and kill her so you can tell her you're gay. But why don't you let her get through mom and in and, and, and that process. And, and then, she's only two years out from her, her husband leaving, right? Yeah. 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 Give her. Give what, her a little time. Why do you? What's What's in it for you? Why? Why, why the hurry? Oh, well, because I'm like I'm really in love with who I'm with. Oh, you see, you want to bring her to the well, Christmas yeah, and stuff like, like that. We're like on terms of marriage and stuff. We have identical tattoos on our ring fingers. And well, that's I just, love. I want her to know how happy I am. Hold on a sec. When you get the identical tattoo on the ring finger, that means it's going to last forever. Of course, you have to because it is written in ink yeah. on your flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Identical. Yeah, uh, that's it, and that's love. Uh, where, where the hell was she, Karen? Over here? Five. No. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Where was she? What are we? Are we high? Four. Four. Okay. Hey, Michelle? Yes. All right, so uh, you want to bring her around. You want to start that process. Well, yeah, they've met her, and I don't see how they, okay. you know, they can't see she's gay because she you know, screams out, you know? She's kind of butch? Um, well, no, not butch. She's just... 
Who's the guy in the relationship? Is she the guy in the relationship? <laughs> no, there's no guy. There's no guy? No, she's just tomboyish, you know. Oh, so she's a guy. There's no guy, though. Well, I mean, like, we drove up to my mom's house on a motorcycle. Okay. <laughs> Mom's got a pr probably a pretty decent idea. How do you carry those golf clubs on that motorcycle? You got, a, <laughs> you got like a trailer or something? No. No. All right. Well, your mom knows. And listen, I, I, I do think you should tell her, and uh, I'll, I'll say why. We, we, we tell a lot of people on this show not to tell their parents. We, I, uh, I don't like tell, the idea of talking to your parents, really, huh. about anything. I don't think that's a good idea. But we have a lot of people call this show. They're 15, 16 years old. They want to talk. They want to tell everyone at school they're gay. And we tell them, listen, you're in for a rocky few years. People are going to find out about this. Why don't you just tell them you crapped your pants or you still wet your bed or something? You know, the kids are going to pick up on this. They're going to run. They're liable to beat you up. But here's an don't adult. Don't chance it. There's an adult who, who's... Because of it being a secret, is actually having her life affected by it. Right. This yeah. is an adult, and even if she was single, I would say no. Don't burden your mom. Why bother? With this. She Why just bother? Got divorced. Well, she also wouldn't be affected by it so much. Let her bury her yeah. mom. But if you're in a relationship, you're in love, you got the matching tattoos, you want to bring her over for the holidays. Now it's time to tell her. Yeah. So I'll go for that. Go uh. ahead and tell her, Liz. Uh, yes. And plus, uh, her pulling up on a hog with a uh, buzz cut, looking like uh, Sergeant Carter from Gomer Pyle, uh, she probably got a pretty good idea. <laughs> Pyle! <laughs> I'll tell you, favorite, Pyle, favorite Sergeant Carter comedy. Pyle, under no circumstances do you let anyone pass this guard gate. Do you hear me, Pyle? Yes, sir, Sergeant No one's on it. No one. If you don't have an ID card, nobody gets on the other side of this gate. All right, Sergeant Carter, nobody gets on the other side of this gate. Fast forward five minutes. Uh, got a hot date with Bunny, pile. I left my wallet in the bear. Do you have your ID? It's in my wallet, pa. Sorry, sir, you cannot get past this gate. Pile! Sergeant Carter told me not to let... I am Sergeant Carter! That's good comedy. And then you stretch that out for a half hour. That's funny. Annex and Sue. Yeah, Anna, you missed all the good comedy. You're too young. Imagine that. Sergeant Carter trying to sneak onto his own base. Huh? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, you know what I'm talking about. I'm amused. I'm very amused. Pyle! Huh. You... They made me promise that... That was me, Pyle! <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 right. Yeah? right. Ah, come on. Right. Liz? Pyle, how dare you. Vicky? Yeah. I mean, uh, Liz, sorry. What's up? Um, I have a question. Um, I recently came in contact with uh, the guy that I lost my virginity to, and um, he just happened to be coming back down to, um, to where I'm from, and so we ended up hanging out that day and everything, and accidentally making out and stuff like that. And then he invited me to, <laughs> to go over and visit him um, in New York and everything. So You know, you, I know, you know, almost no matter where it goes from here, the fact that it was an accidental makeout suggests to me this relationship is flawed. You know what I mean? Whenever people are, are, are it is flawed. You know, whenever people are giving in to attractions that run counter to their instincts, which yeah. is what you're saying, it was like I shouldn't have done it, but accidentally it did. Yeah. Right, forget it. Stop. Yeah, stop I, right I, there. I don't want a relationship with this. No, guy. well, stop. Well, you're in, but so stop. Well, I, I want to be his friend, though. Oh, please, Liz, please. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you'll have more accidents with him. What then? Yeah, you go to New York. He's going to nail you at so, uh, so in, at LaGuardia. So, so what do I say to him so that? I have a boyfriend. But I don't. Well, that's okay. what you say to him. L Liz, uh, <laughs> you don't want to go to New York? Well, I do want to go. I just don't want him to You go to, to New York, he nails you in the airport. Really? Absolutely. In one of those lockers. <laughs> what happened to the lockers? <laughs> Hold they on a second. There's just not so many of them. I know, but there used to be, we talk about humor, there used mm -hmm. to be a lot of locker humor. Got hands coming out, like you <laughs> opening a locker, hand coming out, handing you something. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff in movies being stashed at the <laughs> airport locker. Remember that? Where's the ransom money? It's in the airport locker. Yeah. Where Where are the incriminating pictures? Where are the documents? Where are they? They're in the airport. People keeping a lot of stuff in airport lockers. I don't know that they have airport lockers anymore. Yeah. I like to look into that. They do. You put those quarters in the little side door. No, yeah. I haven't seen them. Anna, you miss, you miss uh, airport locker humor. And Gomer Pyle. And Gomer Pyle, don't you? No. no. You don't, 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 don't know about airport well, He's going to tell you more about souffle, no. so but first we're going to take a break. Huh? What about souffle? <laughs> you know souffle humor? No. Uh -huh. where, where, where it falls when the guy slams the door? You don't know no. that? No. Okay. I'll explain that to you uh, during the break. Pyle! <laughs> All right. It is uh, Love Line. Who's this? I know, but it's this one. 
That is uh, Anna. She is uh, one of the graduates <laughs> of uh, Children of the Night, a very uh, worthy group that uh, K-Rock, the uh, mother station out here, is going to give a little money to, and uh, other people give money to, and it's, uh, like I said, it's all going to a good cause. They take uh, children who, uh, well, people between the age of uh, 11 and 17, why Why those ages? 18, you're an adult, and well, under actually, 11? We, uh, we got a license to run a group home just so that we could uh, be legitimate and above board, and, and they're the ones that set those age limits. So They do. We the, the adolescents need to be apart from adults. That's one of the licensing right. features in California. You cannot be an adult. You can't, you can't, mix, adoles you can't mix adolescents and adults. Right. Adults can call our hotline, and we will help adults get away from pimps as well and just give them referrals for housing. Oh, that, what's that, the number? That uh, hotline number is one uh, 800 Five five one thirteen hundred one eight hundred five five one thirteen hundred. You can call that anywhere around the country. Anywhere around the country, including Vancouver, Canada, up a little higher, and um, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, they, uh, they, they really. Uh, uh, Anna has been through the program, and Anna really got you back up on your feet, right? Yeah, it did a lot. I, I look back at a lot of my journals and see how far I've come. Yeah. Actually, in four months, it's it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, even Vicky can tell you. I at first, I didn't care. I what, didn't think anybody cared. Why did cared. you call at the beginning? I didn't. How'd My you? probation officer did. Oh, I see. There you go. And I, it, I didn't know anything about it. But there you go, probation officer. How much? Did he, I, I like I said. I, I if, just from a pure monetary standpoint, what does it cost? Judges, cops probation officers the she's whole a great example crime of drugs i'm working that system though she was in foster care through the department of children's services in another state and they didn't and do anything she ran for away me. from 30 something different programs and they didn't know what else to do with her so they called us and they actually we, we flew her in from uh, nevada at first they told um me that i couldn't go there because i was um in child protective services mm -hmm. and so the lady that was working with me that is now my probation officer said well i'm going to go to the judge tell him i need to put you on probation so that you could come here come to california for the um children of the night program <clears throat> and terminate dcfs custody it, if that would have never happened i would have still been doing the same things that i done i've done right basically that system failed me right they and they didn't they didn't work on the things that i needed to work on they didn't help me in any way they just continued the process of yeah, it's like a where, losing me in the system. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and listen, uh, as I've said many a time, it's like you, you can pay now or you can pay down the road. And when you pay down the road, it's, it's going to be with a lot of interest. And that's why we need to help groups like this. <coughs> uh, you can go out and get the uh, CD from uh, eight, eight Stop 7, question everything, buck 99. Got it. Did you say Tower? Tower Records has uh, donated the counter space to keep that up and <laughs> also uh, their website. Good. And, you know, There's it, a tower dot com? Uh, Towerrecords.com. It's just, you know, for the, i, I got to go on a quick speech here. For yeah. those of you who, uh, those be very you, quick. Uh, the goddamn liberals who want the, the government to handle everything, this is what happens when the government handles everything. We get, we get everyone gets lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Way too much money gets spent on nothing. Yeah. You, you get industry involved here. You get these, you get these uh, people like uh, K-Rock and Tower Records. You get these bands Warner like the Eight Stop Seven and Warner Brothers. You get these people that come together. They know how to get stuff done you want you want to go to the government and get something done get in line bunch of retards over there getting paid way too much and no one can ever get fired you, you think they're going to get anything done go down to the dmv go down to the department of building safety which is sadly very close to where you live and see how much you get stuff done over there go get in line that's you want to get something done you go over to you go over to k-rock you go to tower rex you go to warner brothers you go wherever these people the reason you know they get stuff done that's how they got their business that's how come they are what they are and they get it done and i, I i'd like to see more of that and also less the, the, of the, the private sector shuffle. allows a lot more flexibility so you can actually do what needs to be done well it's, 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 it kids. Yeah, yeah. it's not just one big ball of red tape where everyone's shuffling their feet trying to kill time before they can go well, sorry, take a, a, a lunch all, break all, a, a lot of arbitrary rules are put on that you can, you can only keep a kid for two weeks because after all we have a limited resource blah, blah, blah. these 90 days they get treatment here and if they need longer they need. we can keep them longer it's completely individually based yeah i'd I'll like to sponsor one kid could i do that just pick one kid Put, I make him wear a sweatshirt with my name on it. <laughs> no. I, I pay for the one kid. <laughs> have him come by the house, do a little yard work, something like that. Uh -huh. let, let, let him learn about we work. We estimate that it costs about $5,000 to get a child off the streets and get him through a program. So you can sponsor that, that them is, that way. That's nothing. Yeah, if the kid I could think. do roofing or something, I could see doing that. I could talk to my accountant. That's nothing off. compared to what 
Incarceration costs. Well, listen, you want to know where the government pays for a toilet seat that you could go to Home Depot and get for ninety nine, you know, nine ninety nine. Yeah. Now, factor that in with kids. Use the same math. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure five thousand is thirty five grand. I think what failed me in the beginning, though, is when I was twelve years old and I finally got taken away from an abusive stepfather. Um, they t they put me in a mental hospital and they told me because my mother committed suicide when I was seven years old that I had a 35 percent chance that I would and so they locked me up in a mental hospital. That's when I was 12 years old. Yeah. So I think that's when when the system began to fail me even worse. I think that's what messed up um, me more mentally than and emotionally than anything ever that has happened in my life. And, and, and it's failing you in a direct way, but it's failing in an indirect way, the people, mm -hmm. the taxpayers that fund the system, and then mm -hmm. the people that are impacted by the activities of the people who have been failed by the system, whether Absolutely. it be crime, drugs, prostitution, whatever's going on in their neighborhood. They're not feeling it firsthand like you felt it, but indirectly, they're feeling it too. I know my ass hurts from uh, paying 500 well, grand worth of taxes last year. When I was in there, they used to tell me... Um, to feel, um, to express your feelings, but then, like on my birthday, my baby sister was supposed to come see me, and I was locked up in a mental hospital, and I was crying. They were trying to force me to take meds. Right. So that's another way that that I was failed. Right. They they tell me to f feel, but then they drug me up so that I can't feel. It makes absolutely no sense. What meds were they giving you? Um, I was on trazodone, Wellbutrin, um, Depakote. Prozac, Paxil. All at the same time? Um, different times. Sure. Um, Can you get me some of that? Yeah. You don't feel on those? They drug you up so bad. They A lot of the times they'll over drug you mm -hmm. to where you sleep all day. Mm -hmm. You don't remember anything. Um, yeah. You don't feel at all. And, yeah. and, and it just makes it worse because when you come off the drugs, you're feeling all of that and it overwhelms you even more. Right. All right. We got to uh, take ourselves a break. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> take, them, uh, take them serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and we'll be back after this. Yeah, there we go. All right, everybody, here's uh, the number you call if uh, you're between 11 and uh, 17 and you got some problems, you're out on the street and you're into prostitution and God knows uh, what else. 1-800-551-1300. 1-800-551-1300. I want to thank Vicki and Anna for uh, coming in here from Children of the Night, a very worthy cause. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I want to thank Lauren for doing a great job on the phones and uh, lead coffee. I want to thank uh, <laughs> producer Ann for uh, really uh, doing a great job all week booking and uh, getting us all lined up with our tickets and uh, helping us out. And, of course, uh, the uh, ever-changing colored-haired <laughs> one known as uh, Engineer Anderson, who's uh, putting in big weeks over there at the junior college and doing a wonderful job over here in the uh, real school of life. Nice. So, until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You love Fat Cam, don't you, Lardos? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Ingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.